printed in your service folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. I know that my Redeemer lives. And that in the end he will stand upon the earth. After my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is what was written. Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. We are witnesses of these things. Someone might possibly dare to die. 
But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? He was delivered over to death for our sins, and was raised to life for our justification. So as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of God, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and open the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing of his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. fear most in life? Financial failure? A relationship failure? Do you most fear getting sick? Do you most fear the big C, getting cancer? Do you fear growing old? Do you fear death? Fear is a very real emotion in people, and sometimes it can grip us so tightly that it almost squeezes the life that God wants us to live right out of us. There's a lot to be afraid of in the world that we live in. That first Easter morning, there was a lot of fear going around. There was 
fear that those ladies must have felt as they headed to that empty tomb. Fear because, one, they didn't know that it was going to be empty. And then fear as the angels greeted them. I'm sure they also feared for their lives. After all, they saw what happened to their leader, their master, their lord, their friend. What was going to happen to those that followed him and listened to him? And then, as I said, another fear. They saw an angel of God. And the questions, of course, flooded their minds. What does it all mean? And then we hear what that angel tells them first words that he speaks to them that he wants you to hear as well. Don't be afraid. Why not? Why could all fear be lifted from their hearts? Because Jesus won. Satan has been defeated. The tomb was empty. Death has been swallowed up by the light. My friends, listen to the angels as recorded in Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. We sing the response as noted in your service book. spirits sent to do his bidding even before the birth of Jesus they announced to Mary that she was going to have this miracle child and then of course the announcement of the angels flying in the air glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men now God gave the angels this special privilege to be the first ones to announce to mankind that his son was alive. <laughs> the angels now give instructions to the ladies 
that they are going to be his representatives, that they are going to be the ones that have an opportunity to share a message, a message of hope and forgiveness of life. He tells them, go and tell. And my friends, that's what the angels tell us today too. Don't keep this news of salvation to yourself, tell others. Whether it's words that we speak or the actions and how we live our lives, we proclaim the joy of Easter every day. Listen to the angels as recorded in Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. The word of the Lord. We sing the response as well.
Surely this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Words for our further meditation on this Easter morning from Joel chapter 19. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is the word of our God. Seeing an oncologist, heading to the pharmacy, health insurance, hospitals, hospice, caskets, cemeteries, everywhere, and always, we see it, we feel it, the bodies falling apart when we get a little older. In all of human experience, is there anything more obvious than what goes on with our lives? Ever since the creation's first will conflicted with the creator's, what he said has been coming true in one shape, way, or form since the beginning. What did he say? Dust you are, and to dust you will return. So, we frail human bags of dust, we take our meds, we pay our health insurance premiums, and we buy our burial plots. One such frail creature of dust was a man named Job. Now in consideration of Job's losses, one writer once said, we might safely say, that of all the characters in the Bible, except one, Jesus Christ, none was more forsaken than Job. Yet it was a statement of faith put in the heart of Job, even during his suffering, that gives us the words, the basis for one of our all-time most favorite Easter hymns. The one of which we just sang, and we'll finish in just a few moments. Crying out from despair, with what we would call a strong Easter faith, Job spoke about the one person who would return, and not return to dust. He talks about the one who was the glorious Redeemer, and he calls him my Redeemer, the one who will rise from death to shine like the stars forever. My friends, Job had it, and we want it. Easter faith. With such a beautiful hymn, based on such a beautiful statement from Job. You think we'd be able to turn to chapter 19 in Job and find all kinds of other statements like that, right? Not so. Listen to what Job says. Know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. My friends have forgotten me. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own brothers. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. We've all heard about the patience of Job, right? Do these sound like a patient man? Or do they sound more like us? All of the whining, complaining, sniveling we do. Yeah. What does that say about our God who has done so much for us? 
Do we actually ever think that we can take issue with God for what he allows to happen in our lives? Job did. And if you know anything about the story of Job, God looked him straight in the eye and says, Now you listen to me, Job. Boy, he let Job have it big time. Do we ever think that we're getting a, the raw deal in life? If it came down to getting what we deserve, I don't think we want to go there, actually. I'm not getting a fair shake, and God, it's your fault. Arrogantly questioning God at times. So often Job's sin probably is our own sin too, isn't it? It's a good thing that Job's God is also our God. Because we know that after he questioned God, God received him back. God blessed him a hundred times what he had blessed him with the first time. The story of Job isn't complete, though, until we remember that the Lord revealed himself to Job as the Redeemer. Job knew Jesus, not by name, but he knew him as my Redeemer. And he says, my Redeemer lives. The one who suffered in my place, he lives. The one who paid with his life for all my whining and complaining and sniveling, he's the one that lives. Jesus is risen from the dead. He is my Redeemer. I am redeemed. And as he lives, I will live. When Jesus exhaled for the last time, your purchase price was paid in full. Not only your complaining, but all of our commandment breaking too. Purchased, paid for, in that crucified body. Plain and simple, he died to redeem you and the deeds done. 32 times. 32 times in a hymn that has 32 lines, he lives. So my friends, when the, when the pressures of life, of a hundred different problems, are pressing down on you, and you want to, to grumble and complain, think to yourself, I know he lives. When faith hasn't been and isn't what it should be, I know he he lives. When the funeral arrangements have to be made for a Christian loved one, I know he lives. When it seems there is nothing good to speak of, despite every depressing thing that my head tells me regarding the current state of affairs, I know he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives what comfort this sweet sentence grin. Scraping his festering sores with a piece of jagged pottery. Job's faith looked at that future when everything would be bright. When he no longer would have to suffer. On that day when his Redeemer would stand upon the earth. Job knew that he would have a perfectly restored body. Instead of merely repeating what Job said, why don't we start thinking about that ourselves? Why don't we start repeating those words, what this will mean for me? Even after decay has taken over and returned to dust, with your own eye, you will see Jesus. Blindness, loss of an eye, Macular degeneration, impaired vision, forget it. 2020 vision. You'll look into the eyes of your Savior. Your body, with healthy skin wrapped around it again. Healthy, disease free. No osteoporosis bending your back, no debilitating surgery that's left you with scars. No lingering effect of, of cancer or chemotherapy. A complete, fully functioning human body. Shining with the glory that we can't even understand. The glory that Jesus had 
when he came out of that tomb. What we want this Job passage to do for us is to help us get past the thinking that the resurrection is some unrealistic science fiction film just using the latest technical effects. It's a very real of our Easter celebration. A traditional burial in a casket, organ donation, cremation, amputation, none of this is going to matter when we stand upon the earth on that last day. He will take us from the dust that we have become, and he will form us like he did that first man, Adam, out of the dust of the ground. And he will take us from being lifeless, hopeless, to being living, shining, breathing, seeing, speaking, glorified people that will give him honor. Bodies and souls reunited again, never again to be separated by death. We will see Jesus in joy for eternity. If this day calls to mind for you the death of a loved one, or if today or this week or next month will bring you to a cemetery where there's a grave marker or the remains of a dear Christian loved one with perhaps your same last name, as you feel the imperfections and notice more and more the, the wear and tear, as you see the years fly by even more quickly, the older you get, and you anticipate the day that you will lie down for the last time, think of these words. Memorize these words. Read these words. Write them down. They contain a message that will make your heart yearn to see Jesus. That's what this day is all about. That's what Easter is all about. Jesus has redeemed me. Jesus will raise my body to life again. And whatever I have to go through until that day, I can't wait to see him. Amen. May remain seated. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds from faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we sing the remaining verses. I know that my Redeemer will. <laughs>
O risen Savior, grant us hearts to yield you gladly, freely of your own. With the sunshine of your goodness melt our thankless hearts of stone, till our cold and selfish natures, warmed by you at last, believe that we're happy and we're blessed tis to give and to receive. We ask this in your name. Please rise as we continue to unite our hearts and minds in prayer. <clears throat> Precious Savior, we need you every moment of every day. Be with us. Shower upon us your promised grace and blessings. As our exalted prophet, instruct us, encourage our hearts with the gospel of forgiveness and help us grow in our faith and knowledge of salvation. As our exalted high priest, hear us when we pray in your name and intercede at our Father's throne in our behalf. As our exalted king, watch over us day by day, protecting us from all danger, guarding and keeping us from all evil. Preserve us to your heavenly kingdom by granting us daily repentance and renewal of faith. Jesus, our beloved friend, whose continual presence has been promised us, be at our side in all troubles. Give us strength to bear them, wisdom to overcome them. Grant us grace to endure every sorrow that comes our way, and courage, courage to cope with every disappointment. You are the help of the helpless, who lifts up those who are fallen. Comfort, relieve our supporting our individual needs. And as we travel the hard road of suffering and sorrow at times, may we learn to love you more and eagerly await that day when we will see you with our own eyes. For we know that our Redeemer lives. Lord, we ask this in your name. And it's in your name that we join and pray the prayer you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us, blessings of body and soul. But today we especially thank you for that gift of life, the life that you promise we will have for all eternity, for the glorious bodies that you will bring back at the resurrection to eternal life. May we leave here today with renewed zeal to live that faith that you have planted in our hearts and to show others, too, your great love and forgiveness. We ask it in your name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine and be gracious to you. The Lord look at you with his favor and give you his peace. Especially our uh, guests with us this morning. Happy to have you with us. Uh, special thank you to uh, our trumpeters, to uh, Mrs. Ebert uh, for what, nine different total hymns or something like that today between the two services. We thank her, the choir as well. Uh, there's a few announcements in your service folder. You can look at those. Um, just a reminder that there are just a couple of spots left open for the, uh, the painting canvas if you're interested in that. Uh, you can speak to my wife or text her. Uh, the number is in the in the bulletin. Have a wonderful, blessed Easter.